Hi, you're watching my channel, Cloud Busted. So I picked up another Traxxas, and I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably saying to yourself, why is this guy buying another Traxxas? He hates Traxxas. And you're kind of right. I wouldn't say I hate him, but I'm not the biggest fan of Traxxas. But I always thought the Slash was pretty cool. And I think everybody at one point should own a Slash 4x4 or even a two-wheel drive. So the way I ended up with this truck was a friend of mine wanted a four-wheel drive short course truck and he thought he wanted a slash so he found this one online for cheap money I loaned him the money to go buy it he went bought it brought it back to the shop went to take it for a ride it wasn't what he expected and then so I gave him his money back I bought it back off him I figured maybe I could do a little bit of work to it flip it and make a few bucks I mean it's got oh makings of a nice truck it's got Proline Badlands on it, they look like brand new. It's got Tekken Electronics, it's pretty quick. I took it for a ride, and I was kind of impressed. Nothing really broke. Um, it's definitely an older one. I can tell by the radio. I'm not a big fan of this body. It's, I guess this is a, a Raptor, probably Proline. It's an older one, though. 4000 KV Tekken motor. And an RX-8 ESC, so it's a pretty good setup. It's not bad. It's an older one, but it works. It's got the, it's got the nice tracks and shocks on it. Old servo. So I figured I'd run it around like this for a little while, do a little bit of work to it, and like I said, flip it, make a couple bucks, buy another Cloudbuster or something like that. But then I changed my mind. I decided to go all out and build the most expensive slash I could, buying the most expensive parts I could find for it. Just see how far I could take this thing and show anybody who's interested in one of these how far you can go with a slash. So I'll show you the parts I picked up. This is definitely one of the first things to go. And I'll be replacing with the Futaba 3PV. I love these radios. I use these in mostly all my trucks, especially the Cloudbusters. This thing's awesome. It's got a nice, easy to use, good size digital display. And it's got the TFHSS. That's awesome. Everything should have TFHSS. This body's pretty cool, I guess. This is an older Proline Raptor body. I don't really like the paint job. It's, it's done nice, it's pretty neat. Like these strips right here, you could tell they put the paint on here before they cut it out and then they cut it out. It's pretty creative. Well done and I give them a lot of credit, but it's just not really the look that I like, not the look I'm going for. So I want the J Concepts Chevy Silverado trophy truck body. I love this body, it looks awesome. And I'm not really into like flashy paint jobs, so I just went with gunmetal gray, silver, and black. And if you take a look at these five holes that are punched out, that's optional. When you buy this body, it comes with this, it says right here. All high flow cutouts are optional intended for the expert racer. They're obviously talking about me, so that's why I cut them out. There was nothing wrong with the stock chassis. It was in good shape, no cracks, not much damage underneath, but... It's kind of old. Now they make a LCG or low center of gravity. So that's the way I definitely knew I was going to go right from the beginning. So it comes as a kit like this right from Traxxas. Everything you need, all the hardware, all the parts and pieces. Chassis was gray. But I dyed it black with Rit dye, and you can pick up Rit dye pretty cheap at like a arts and crafts store, like a fabric store or something like that, and it's really easy to do. All you do is submerge this in a, a pot of boiling water. What I did was I put two screws in the front and the back, so that way it could sit in the bottom of the pan, and it would stay submerged. Also, get the liquid underneath it, and then you just once it's submerged, you you dump your Rit dye in, you stir it up real good, put it on like a low boil. And let it sit there for like three hours and then I just shut the stove off and then let it cool down on its own and then next morning I take it out run it under water rinse it off and it looks like this and this 
it soaks into the nylon chassis and so it doesn't scratch off it's real durable so that's awesome I don't know if they sell these in black but I only found them in gray so I just bought a gray one and dyed it black it's real easy to do and the Proline tires that came on that thing when I bought it were good but I wanted something a little better so I want the Proline trenches I already mounted two of them up while I was waiting. These are the wheels I went with. They're the RC four wheel drive aluminum beadlock wheels. These are awesome. They're beautiful. They look just like the race line wheels used by real trophy trucks. They even say it's hard to read, but right here it says it's got race line engraved right in it. And this is how they work. You just take these screws out. They give you a tool. That's kind of a pain, even though it's easy to do. There's it's time consuming because there's a lot. And this beadlock ring is plastic, and then once you take this ring off, this plastic insert, sorry, the ring is aluminum. The insert's plastic to keep the weight down, I'm assuming. So it's easy, you just take these screws out, slide the tire over it, and it locks the tire in place. Awesome wheel. The hex is bolted on the back, right there, so it even kind of looks like lug nuts. And it gives you a lot of different options. They come with two different width spacers. Tekken motor is nice, but I thought this would be better. It's Castle Creations, Mamba Monster 2. So when you get these, you can get either a 2600 kV motor or the lower one. I think it's like 2000 or 2200. So the lower kV runs recommended 2 to 6S. This one is recommended 2 to 4S, but I've run these things on 6S, no problem. I'm guessing after like prolonged use, motor temps might go up or whatever, but I never had a problem. But this truck, I probably won't go any more than 4S anyway. I think with this motor and ESC, that should be more than fine. For steering components, I went with a waterproof Savic Servo, STRC bell crank assembly, GPM servo horn and linkage, STRC shock towers, RPM front bumper. hot racing motor mount, heavy duty motor mount, aluminum, and this is made specifically for the LCG chassis, so if you do want one of these, make sure you get for the LCG chassis, because it is different. Proline shocks. This is the Traxxas center diff. Comes factory with a slipper clutch. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people say they like the center diff. Some like the slipper assembly better. That's just something I'll have to play around with, see what I like best. It's just some of the paint I use for the body. Always Tamiya paint. Tamiya silk black, silver, and then I use gunmetal gray. Tamiya makes the best paint, especially the Italian red. That's what the Cloudbuster used. It's my favorite. All right, what do we got here? This is a pinion. So the Castle Motor uses a 5mm pinion shaft, so I went with that. I'm keeping the stock 1354 gearing. Alright, then this box right here, this is everything to do the X01 conversion shafts. You get the you get the four shafts, bearings, some uh, the steering pieces. If you go online, you can look up everything you need. Part numbers, that's a good upgrade. This is more X01 parts, so what this is, this is these are the differential gears and all the components. Again, you can get all this stuff right off of Trax's website. The advantage to these is they're hardened steel spiral cut gears. So the X01 was a like what they call a supercar, it was made for high speed and handled lots of power. So definitely a good gear upgrade. They give you everything, they give you all the the diff lube all the parts pieces there and also an upgraded slipper clutch so if I don't like that center diff I'll be putting that on alright what else I know I gotta have more stuff here actually that looks like it so I'm gonna start assembling all this stuff I'm not gonna do a whole video of the tear down or reassembly because there's tons of videos on these things and it would make for a super long video so I'm gonna get to work now so I started assembling the LCG chassis and I started disassembling the original truck. Look at this, it's crazy, I'm surrounded by Traxxas parts. 
Anyway, so I'll show you what I got done so far. So the LCG kit comes with everything, like even the battery hole down and all the hardware and all the pieces. So I bought this hot racing motor mount aluminum, which is really nice. The reason I went with the hot racing, it's got a way bigger bearing right here. So bigger is always better. Uh, this is the Castle Creations A-Scale motor. The uh, Savix digital waterproof servo. And then the receiver mounted in. So I'll show you the difference in the X01 differential gears real quick. So the one on the left is the stock gear. One on the right is the X01. And not only is the X01 a hardened steel, it's a way better material. It's also spiral cut. And what that means is these teeth, they kind of curve out. And they call it spiral cut. What that does, that gives more tooth contact between the ring, ring and pinion. It makes it way stronger. So the rear gearbox is all back together. I got the STRC shock tower mounted on. The only thing I noticed, there was a bit of dirt in there when I took it apart. So before I bolt it up to this piece, I'm going to put a little bit of RTV, a gasket maker. I'm using the green gear. It's for gear oil. It's actually gray. It just comes in a green tube. So I'll just put a little bit right here. You only need a little bit. You don't need a lot. I just kind of dab it on there and smooth it around. There's like a little step up right here so I pay attention to that and then in the corners it's just a small amount real thin coating is all you need. A lot of people tend to overdo this but you only need a little bit and so that'll keep all the dirt out for sure. On the left is the X01 shaft and you can see the end is way bigger than the factory one right there one other thing to note is those two little washers, it's very important. Those go on the rear only, but they slide on the axle right there before you go in the bearing. So that's important, that's rear only. So the chassis is all together, except for the ESC. I still got to put the ESC on. I'm going to have to make up an ESC mounting plate. That's no big deal, but for now, I'm going to start drilling out the wheels. So when you buy these hex adapters, it comes with the drill bit. So I have to drill out the wheel. Well, not really the wheel, because there's the wheel, and then there's the wheel adapter right in there. And RC four wheel drives gives you an extra set of wheel adapters. These are like the thinner ones. I ran the thicker ones, put the wheels out a little bit, maybe make it more stable. So now I'm just gonna drill out the wheel and get the wheels mounted. Oh yeah, make sure you always wear safety glasses. So everything's back together in the home stretch now. Another little issue I ran into. So now I'm just going to mount the electronics. So they give you this receiver box. It's waterproof. And I want to keep this thing waterproof because I'll be using it behind my shop and also like, kind of like a basher. So I want to keep it waterproof. So because I'm running an A-scale motor, there's not a lot of room right here to fit the ESC. I could if I wanted to. I could just get rid of the waterproof case move the receiver a little bit forward that'll give me plenty of room to mount this but I wanted to keep it waterproof so what I did was if you see these little posts right here these attach to factory holes what they were were cloudbuster links these were aftermarket plastic cloudbuster links that I didn't like for one reason or another they were supposed to be like the next greatest thing when they came out they have like a they had like a steel insert in them for strength but they didn't really work too well, I could pull out here, so I cut them down, put them right here, and then I ran over to my shop, and I just made up this piece of aluminum right here. I beveled the edges to reduce weight, drilled a few holes, countersunk them, and it mounts right up there with three screws. And the way these attach to the chassis is with the studs in them, I just cut these down a little bit and you just screw them right into the chassis. Mount this plate right here, and now I can mount the ESC right there. Put the on off switch right there, and also like there's room underneath if I wanna put like a glitch buster for the servo or something like that. So now I'll be able to keep this thing waterproof. Now if this were like, a, if this were something I was gonna use on like a carpet track or a clay track where it wouldn't get wet, Ideally, 
you want to keep this thing as low as possible because all your weight down low is going to be better but because I'm going to be using this outside on a really loose uneven surface and I'll be running a big battery having this up here like that it's not going to matter at all the other option was to mount it maybe like up here because that would still allow me to run the waterproof receiver box but and these wires would still kind of reach but really that's not much lower than right here so I figure right here is a better choice for now here it is Chuck's back together looking handsome I really like those RC four wheel drive race line wheels and the J Concept Chevy Silverado body thing looks awesome. I like the gray and silver. Like I said before, I'm not into the flashy stuff. So as far as decals, I think it could use a little more. I just used the ones that came in the kit. I did add a couple other ones. If you take a look right here, that's a race line decal came with the wheels. Because those are RC four-wheel drive race line replicas. The aluminum beadlock wheel, it even says race line in it. The American flag in the back window, that came from a Cloudbuster kit. I got a bunch of Cloudbuster decals, so I thought I would have to throw at least one Cloudbuster part on this truck. I put this silver Silverado decal on the darker gray right there. Right there, the hood's like inset a little bit. I painted that silver and put the Chevrolet decal on. So that's about it for decals. I think it needs a little bit more. But uh, at the same time, it kind of looks cool playing like this. I don't know, so... I might add more later. I got the holes cut out right there. RPM front bumper looks great. I'm running the stock rear bumper. I might change that to an RPM one down the road. I don't know. We'll see. So now I'll just take the body off, give you an overview of all the parts I put on. So I want the Castle Mamba Monster 2 ESC motor combo. ESC can handle 6S, motor they say only 4S because it's the 2650 KV. If I run the, the 2000 KV, which I have one, that's good up to 6S. But I've ran this setup many times on 6S, never a problem. But I think the most I'll run this on is 4S anyway. Running a Savix, waterproof servo. I did the X01 conversion for the differentials front and back and also the X01 axle conversions. RC four wheel drive beadlock wheels in the Raceline replica. Proline shocks. And these shocks are nice, they have dual springs. The upper spring is a softer spring rate. And with the softer spring rate on the upper spring, the small bumps are absorbed by the upper spring. And then once you go off the bigger jumps, the main spring takes over. Because the upper spring gets coil bind. And that's when those lower stiffer springs take over. And I always start off with a 35 weight shock oil front and back just to get a baseline and then I change it as needed. And that's something that's just going to take a, a bunch of laps of tuning, changing like shock positions and different weight oils. I put a new drive shaft in it, center drive shaft. I just went with a stock Traxxas one because I hear they last a long time and they're cheap. I bought one off Amazon for like $6, so if it goes bad, I'll just keep another stock one. I could upgrade to the Techno and all that, but from what I hear, the stock one's okay, so I'll try that for a while. I went with the Traxxas center differential instead of the slipper clutch, but when I bought the X01 kit for the differentials, it came with this. It came with the upgraded slipper. It came with all the different slipper plates, all the springs and then an adapter bearing, but I didn't run that yet because I bought the center differential kit, but if that center diff fails, I'll try that slipper out, see how it works. I went with the hot racing motor mount because it comes with a bigger bearing and it's aluminum, also acts like a heat sink. I went with the STRC shock towers, and they have all different colors for the shock towers. I never really care about color coordinating a vehicle, but they offered me gunmetal gray, so I thought that looked pretty cool, so I went with the gunmetal gray shock tower, and also I went with the gunmetal gray steering linkage, the bell crank assembly. Right there you can see the GPM aluminum steering horn and it comes with the steel turnbuckle. I got that in green, I don't know why, I just thought it would look cool. LCG chassis conversion kit and I dyed it black with, with the red dye. RPM front bumper, I guess you could buy a light kit for this, maybe I'll get that, maybe not, I don't know. 
I don't know how good this is going to be because the factory bumper connects to the gearbox. This one doesn't, so I don't know how durable it's going to be. I'm assuming because it's RPM, it's got to be pretty good. This stuff's usually been great. So that's pretty much it. It's all back together. Everything's new pretty much except for front and rear gearbox covers. A arms front and back because when I bought that other slash it had new RPM arms on it so I reused those and there was a few hinge pins and some hardware I reused turnbuckles but that's about it. I probably would have been better off just building this whole build right from scratch because that's pretty much what I did. And then I got the Vitaba 3PV radio with that uh, TFHSS that stuff's awesome. So this thing's ready to go. So thanks for watching. Take care. Like and subscribe. I'll have a running video coming up soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.